In 5.3, we are going to look at electron configuration, periodic properties, trends that we can see in the periodic table. First of all, we're going to look at valence electrons. Valence electrons are very, very important. We will use these going forward in many different chapters. So first of all, an, a valence electron is an electron that is in the outer most energy level. They can be lost, gained, shared, um, any of these things with other elements to try to form compounds. And these elements are what make the atoms reactive. The fact that they either want to get rid of them or they want to gain them, the more unstable they are, the fewer, or if they have a lot and they just need one more, this is what's going to make them want to form um, compounds. Another thing we're going to look at in this section is called periodic trend. Um, a periodic trend is going to be looking at how does this change as we move across or down the periodic table. So for valence electrons, the trend is going to be that as we move across the periodic table, the number of valence electrons is going to get larger. So if we look at these examples, first of all, here we have SR, strontium, which is in group two. And if we look at the electrons, there are two in the highest energy level. And that corresponds with the fact that it's in group two. The group number tells us how many electrons are in the outer level, or how, how many valence electrons. Now, earlier I have said that this D block is a little bit more difficult to work with. So when we're working with valence electrons, we're just going to be working with the S and P elements. So with SR, we have two in the outer energy level. It is in group two. Iodine, if we count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the outer level is actually in group 17. So since we're getting rid of the D block, we're going to count our groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the block or the group that it's in, so group 17 will now have seven valence electrons. If I were to look at nitrogen, Nitrogen is in group 15 or group 5 if we're not counting the D block. So that tells us it has five valence electrons. And if we look at this periodic table, it's got that shown. It's a little hard for you to see, but all of group 1 have one valence electron. Group 2, 2. So if we look at it this way, this is something that you need to memorize. The number of valence electrons in the main block groups. Now do notice that helium is a little bit different. It's filled, but it does only have two. Atoms want to have a filled valence shell or a filled outer shell. So for most, they're going to want to get eight electrons in the outer shell and do whatever they can to get those eight gain, lose, or share those electrons. Now I said most, hydrogen and helium want two. Everybody else is going to want eight. So to get those, they can either gain, lose, or share electrons. Now remember that electrons have a negative charge. So if I am losing a negative charge from a neutral atom, that would cause the atom to have an overall positive charge. If I am adding a negative charge to a neutral atom, that would give me an overall negative charge. So if I look at fluorine, which is in group 17, so it's going to have seven valence electrons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's going to want to gain one electron to have eight. So if I put one more electron in there. Now it has an overall net charge of one. 
or a negative one. And so any ion that has a negative charge is called an anion. If I look at sodium, sodium has one electron and it's out of shell, so it wants to get rid of that. So right now it's got a neutral charge, no charge. If I get rid of that one, it can now have eight in its outer shell because the lower shell becomes the outer one because there's nothing left in the outer shell. So since we got rid of one electron, now it has a net charge of plus one, and this is called a cation. So ions with a positive charge are called cations. And I remember that because cat has a T, which looks like a plus sign. So there's your little cat ion to help you remember. If we look at sodium, sodium has one valence electron. So it wants to get rid of that to have eight in its outer shell. So if I get rid of one electron, it would have an overall plus one charge. So if we look at the periodic table, group one all had one valence electron. So they're gonna get rid of that one, leaving them with a plus one charge. Group two all had two valence electrons, so they want to get rid of those two electrons, leaving them with an overall plus two charge. Then if we go over to the other end, group 18, they have a filled valence shell, so they don't want to gain, lose. They're not going to do anything, so they're going to maintain their neutral charge. Group 17 have seven valence electrons, so they're gonna gain one electron to give them a negative one. Here, they these all had six valence electrons, so they want to gain two electrons, so that gives them a negative two charge. When we look at these, we're looking at what's the easiest thing to do, really. So, group 13 have three valence electrons, it's easier to get rid of three than gain five. So if we get three, rid of three electrons, that leaves us with a plus three. And group 15 has five, so it's easier to gain three electrons, so they have a negative three charge. Group 14 has four, so really they're probably going to end up sharing. Most of the time we'll consider these to have a plus four charge, um, but Typically, we will try to stay away from working with that group. But you do need to have memorized what charge each element would form if it becomes an ion. And you should be able to do this just by looking at how many valence electrons they would have. Or if it's easier to remember this chart, you can do that as well. Losing an electron means that we're going to become positive. Now, if we're working with configurations, here I have the electron configuration for sodium. But if sodium becomes an ion and loses an electron, we just have to remove one of the electrons from the configuration to write the configuration for sodium as a positive ion. So instead of this configuration, sodium ion would now have this configuration. If we were adding electrons, for instance, if we needed to add one, we would then add one here, so it would become 3s2. So it was just going to depend on what we're doing with our electrons, how we would change the configuration. Next, we're going to look at a few definitions and how um, they trend across the periodic table. So atomic radius is basically looking at the radius of an atom. So from the center, the nucleus of an atom, out to where it would bond to something else, half that distance is your atomic radius. It's going to get larger as we go down the periodic table because you're adding energy levels, it's going to get smaller as we go across because they're being pulled in, those electrons are being pulled in tighter to the nucleus. 
So you can kind of see, basically think of this as the size of an atom. So you can see it gets bigger as it goes down. Generally, it gets smaller as it goes across. Ionization energy is going to be the energy required to move one electron from a neutral atom. Some atoms, this is going to be very difficult because they're so close to having eight electrons, they don't want to give those up. Some, it'll be really easy because they want to get rid of that one to have eight in the lower shell. So if we look at this, this is the trend. Like I said, it's kind of different as you go across the chart. As you get this closer this way, they don't want to get rid of those, so it has it requires more energy. Over here, it's rather easy. The more electrons you try to strip off of an atom, it's going to require more and more energy. So those are called successive ionization energy, second ionization energy, third, fourth. Electron affinity is going to be the energy change when you have a neutral atom gaining an electron. And so again, this is going to vary depending on the number of valence electrons. So again, it's rather staggered throughout the periodic table. Electronegativity. This is going to be the ability to attract electrons. How badly do they want to add an electron? So generally, this is going to get larger going across and smaller going down. We will use this to determine what type of bond atoms will form when they combine in later chapters. So you can see fluorine has the highest electronegativity. Whereas we get down in this area, they have rather low electronegativities. And fluorine has seven valence electrons, so it really, really wants that one additional electron. Ionic radius, so here we're looking at basically the size of the atom when it gains or loses an electron. So looking at this, the reddish orange color is the color as a neutral atom. And the green color is the size when it becomes an ion. And then over this way, yellow is neutral, brown is when it becomes an ion. One thing to note, the D block and the F block do not always follow these trends. So again, we'll probably stay away from these most of the time.